Hello, welcome back. In today's lecture, we'll be solving a few problems. The reference uh, I used for solving uh, one of the problems is the book written by Ramchandran and uh, Sokos, Mathematical Statistics with Applications, Academic Press, published in 2009. It has an interesting uh, set of both examples and uh, problems. So, the topics covered in this example set are properties of uh, random samples, applications of the central limit theorem and maximum likelihood estimation of the parameters and also the method of moments. The first example is two random samples come from two different populations P1 and P2. The two samples are also of different sizes 9 and 25. The two sample distributions, however, are to have the same standard deviation, what should be the ratio of their respective population standard deviations? So, we are uh, asked to find the ratio of the population standard deviations such that the two unequal sized samples have the same standard deviation. So, depending upon the size of the sample, you can have uh, different sampling distributions. You also know that the uh, sampling distributions of the mean uh, are uh, centered around uh, the uh, population parameter mu itself, but have a lesser spread given by sigma squared by n, where sigma squared is the variance of the population from where from which the random sample was taken and n is the uh, size of the sample taken. So, using this information, we can do the following. I have given a table here. In this table, you can see uh, the uh, population parameters listed P1, P2, mu1, mu2, the two population means sigma1, sigma2, the two population standard deviations and of course, a population would uh, hypothetically comprise of infinite size, a very, very large size. And uh, when you go to the sample, again the sample probability distribution of the means will have a mean value of mu 1 and mu 2 for sample 1 and sample 2 corresponding to the two populations from which they were taken. Standard deviation is sigma 1 by root n 1, sigma 2 by root n 2 and what should be the ratio of sigma 1 by sigma 2 such that uh, these two are equal. So, the question is very simple. So, sigma 1 by root n 1 equals sigma 2 by root n 2 and then we have sigma 1 by root n 1. Root n 1 would be root of 9. So, that is not difficult to get. Sigma 1 by 3, sigma 2 by n 2. What is n 2? 25. Again, that is easy to get. Root of 25 is 5. So, you have sigma 2 by sigma 1 is 1.67. And uh, sigma 2 squared by sigma 1 squared, the ratio of the uh, two population variances would be 25 by 9, which is 2.78. Rather than doing the mental mathematics, let us do it with the calculator 25 by 9 that is 2.777 so on. So, we can truncate it to 2.78. So, the second uh, population variance was 2.78 times more than the first population variance, but the second sample distribution variance was identical to that of the first 
as the second sample size was also higher by 2.78 times the first. So, when you normalize the uh, variances of the uh, two different populations by the sample sizes taken, in this case uh, they were equal uh, because the sample size taken from the second population was higher than the first. So, this sort of balanced out the higher variance of the second population. Okay. Let us go to the next example, again it is a simple uh, example, you have two random samples x 1 bar and x 2 bar, they come from two independent normal populations n 1 mu 1 sigma 1 squared and n 2 mu 2 sigma 2 squared. The two samples are also of different sizes namely n 1 and n 2. So, find the mean and variance of the following linear combinations x 1 bar minus x 2 bar, then x 1 bar plus x 2 bar. Very nicely the problem statement uh, gives us uh, all we require. It says that the two parent populations are normal and uh, they are also uh, independent of uh, one another. So, when you uh, take a random sample out of these uh, two populations, we have to get the random sample means that is easy. So, you will have uh, x 1 plus x 2 plus so on to x n divided by n and again x 2 would be uh, from the second population. Again you add up all the uh, attributes or values of the random sample elements and then divided by that particular sample size. So, you will get sample mean 1 and then you will also get sample mean 2. The important result is suppose you take uh, random variables x 1, x 2, they come from independent normally distributed uh, populations, then a linear combination of x 1 and x 2 would also be a normal distribution. That is an important result. Now, we are having x 1 bar and x 2 bar. x 1 bar in turn is uh, formed uh, by taking the uh, elements of the first sample, adding all the attributes of those uh, sample elements, dividing it by the sample size. Similarly, do for the second random sample. So, now you are going to combine these two. So, rather than thinking of them as uh, x uh, all the elements divided by n 1, then all the elements of the second random sample divided by n 2. You think of x 1 bar and x 2 bar as uh, random variables themselves and they are coming from two independent uh, populations. So, the distributions of uh, x 1 bar and x 2 bar are independent of each other and uh, if you think on these lines, it is easier to uh, proceed further. So, now we have to find the mean and variance of the two linear combinations. Why I gave this example is we encounter such cases very frequently even in doing uh, different kinds of problems. Okay. So, the following linear combinations of random variables will also be normal distributions as the two random variables are independent and normally distributed. So, these would also be normal distributions. So, this would be one normal distribution, this would be another normal distribution. What are the mean and variances of such normal distributions for the two cases? So, expected value of x 1 bar minus x 2 bar would be expected value of x 1 bar minus expected value of x 2 bar that would be mu 1 minus mu 2 and that is represented as mu of x 1 bar minus x 2 bar, mu of the probability distribution formed by x 1 bar minus x 2 bar. Again you have expected value of x 1 bar plus x 2 bar that would be expected value of x 1 bar plus expected value of x 2 bar 
that is equal to mu 1 plus mu 2 which is represented by mu of x 1 bar plus x 2 bar. So, the uh, linear combinations of the uh, probability distributions of uh, x 1 bar and x 2 bar would also result in a normal distribution which is centered at mu 1 minus mu 2. Well, you can ask uh, what would happen if uh, mu 1 is greater than mu 2, no problem it is a positive value. If mu 1 is less than mu, uh, mu 2, it is a negative value. So, what let the uh, uh, resulting probability distribution be centered on a negative value, there is no harm in that. So, again if you look at uh, expected value of x 1 bar plus x 2 bar, that would be e of x 1 bar plus e of x 2 bar which is mu 1 plus mu 2. So, when I am uh, taking a linear combination of independent uh, random variables which are normally distributed, I am going to get a resulting probability distribution which is also normally distributed and having the mean at the sum of the means of the two probability distributions I am adding. So, this is again quite straightforward, let us look at the variance. The variance is quite interesting, the expected value was sign dependent depending upon what was a sign used here. But when you look at the variance, variance of x 1 bar minus x 2 bar is variance of x 1 bar plus variance of x 2 bar, variance of x 1 bar plus x 2 bar is variance of x 1 bar plus variance of x 2 bar. So, the negative sign or positive sign does not matter, the negative sign or the positive sign would really matter when you look at the covariance. And, uh, here in the first case it will be minus covariance of x 1 bar and uh, x 2 bar, here it will be plus of covariance of x 1 bar x 2 bar, but the covariance will vanish because x 1 bar and x 2 bar are independent. So, we simply have uh, variance of x 1 bar plus variance of x 2 bar in both the cases. So, summarizing the results from this uh, example, we have the random variable x 1 bar having a mu 1 as mean and sigma 1 squared by n 1 as variance. So, the standard deviation would be sigma 1 by root n 1, x 2 bar for the second case. Um, again, uh, I think it is better if I sort of go back a little bit, what is x 2 bar? This is the uh, random sample taken from a second population. The second population is normally distributed. So, you take the elements of size n 2, then add the attributes or values of these elements divided by n 2, you will get x 2 bar. And uh, similarly, you can take many such uh, random samples from the second population and uh, each one would have a different uh, average value. So, they will form a distribution of the sample means. This distribution of the sample means would be normal with the mean at mu 2 and the variance at sigma 2 squared by n 2. What is mu 2? It is not only the mean of the sampling distribution, but it is also the mean of the parent population from where the random sample was taken. And uh, sigma 2 squared again is the variance of the second parent population and um, the variance of the probability distribution of the sample means taken from the second population will be smaller and it will be given by sigma 2 squared by n 2. So, the standard deviations of course, would be sigma 1 by root n 1 for the uh, first case, sigma 2 by root n 2 for the second case and x 1 bar minus x 2 bar a linear combination of the two random variables would have a mean of mu 1 minus mu 2, we saw that it is sign dependent, we just saw it a couple of slides back and the variance would be variance of x 1 bar which is sigma 1 squared by n 1 plus variance of x 2 bar which is sigma 2 squared by n 2 and uh, so they are added up 
and when you take the standard deviation it would be square root of sigma 1 squared by n 1 plus sigma 2 squared by n 2. When you take x 1 bar plus x 2 bar as the linear combination of the two random variables, the two random sample means they will be distributed around mu 1 plus mu 2 at the center and having a variance or spread given by sigma 1 squared by n 1 plus sigma 2 squared by n 2. The square root of that would be sigma 1 squared by n 1 plus sigma 2 squared by n 2. This applies for independent distributions when x 1 bar and x 2 bar are independent of each other then this results I have shown here would apply. Okay. So, importantly I would like to re-emphasize the two random samples are independent and uh, normally distributed as they were taken from two independent normal distributions. Hence, the linear combination of these random variables also obeys the normal distribution. Since it obeys the normal distribution, we can express this in the standard form so that we may use the probability tables. So, when you express them in the standard normal form, it becomes quite uh, straightforward. X1 bar may be in turn normalized by subtracting uh, mu1 and x1 bar minus mu1 divided by sigma1 by root n. Let me just correct that uh, typo. And uh, so we have z1 is equal to x1 bar minus mu1 divided by sigma1 by root n1. z2 is x2 bar minus mu2 divided by sigma2 by root n2. And if you look at x1 bar minus x2 bar, you can treat it as another random variable with the, the means mu1 with mean mu1 minus mu2 and uh, standard deviation square root of sigma1 squared by n1 plus sigma2 squared by n2. So, the random variable combination x1 bar plus x2 bar it may be expressed as shown here. So, this is a very nice way of uh, putting it in a compact form and then we may use the standard normal probability tables to do the necessary calculations. Right. Now, let us look at example 3. Uh, the problem statement goes on like this. From historical data, the yields of power from a nuclear reactor supplied by XYZ company are normally distributed. This reactor supplied uh, by this company is operated in several plants around the world. The population standard deviation based on process design specification is 0.7 gigawatts. The average power output of uh, power from 6 random measurements taken at a plant using this reactor is 2 gigawatts. However, the uh, XYZ company had guaranteed an average power output of 2.3 gigawatts from its reactors. Obviously, the client uh, organization using this reactor is getting an average power output of uh, 2 gigawatts and it is concerned because it is supposed to uh, produce 2.3 gigawatts, but uh, it is producing only 2 gigawatts and that may lead to loss. Okay. And when the company is uh, contacted, the company says uh, do not worry, the thing is normal, it is only a random fluctuation or a random variation. Even if you have taken the means, the difference is because of uh, random fluctuation. But the company said uh, if it is random fluctuation on the positive side, if we had got uh, 2.6 gigawatts that would have been nice, but uh, we are getting only 2 gigawatts whereas you are promising 2.3 gigawatts. So, there is an issue here and uh, we have to see what is the probability of uh, the uh, average uh, power output from the plant being 2 gigawatts even though the actual mean value is uh, 2.3 gigawatts. Coming again, what we have to do is um, there is a distribution of the sample means and uh, the mean value is 2.3 gigawatts. So, from this sampling distribution of the means probability 
uh, distribution, what is the probability of picking up a sample with uh, a mean power output of 2 gigawatts. If the probability is quite high, then the probability of occurrence of such uh, kind of events is uh, quite high. So, we can only attribute it to random effects, we cannot say anything more. However, if the probability of picking up a sample of mean power output of 2 gigawatts is pretty low from a sampling distribution of the mean of uh, 2.3 gigawatts, uh, then we have to question the supplier. Okay? So, we have to look at the sampling distributions of the means. Since we are talking about uh, the mean uh, power output, we are referring to the sampling distributions of the means and they also have a probability distribution. So, the population mean is given as 2.3 gigawatts, sample mean x bar, I am using small x bar because um, a sample has been taken at its value known and that is 2 gigawatts only. Population standard deviation based on de design specification is 0.7 gigawatts having the same units as the mean power output and sample size is only 6. So, it is given that the population is normal and the value of uh, sigma is also known which makes life easier for us. And uh, so, we have to find out the probability of the power output being less than or equal to 2 megawatts from the given data. And uh, x bar, I am normalizing it again x bar minus mu 1 by sigma by root 10, 2 minus 2.3 divided by 0.7 by root 6. Let me sort of check it out. So, I should be doing minus 0.3 into root 6 divided by. So, I am getting minus 1.04978, minus 1.05 is ok. And uh, so, what is the probability that uh, x bar would be less than or equal to 2, which is equivalent to asking what is the probability of the uh, standard normal variable z less than or equal to minus 1.05 and the probability is 0.147. So, the probability of the sampled mean being lower than or equal to 2 gigawatts is rather high at 0.15. Okay. So, the company is uh, saying the mean power output is uh, 2.3 gigawatts. It is not stopping there. It is also saying that the standard deviation of the normal distribution is 0.7 gigawatts. Now, we are talking about the sampling distribution of the means, the probability distribution of the sample means. And the probability distribution of the sample means is centered again at 2.3 gigawatts and uh, having a spread given by 0.7 by root 6. So, what is 0.7 by root 6? 0.286. So, there is a spread of 0.286 gigawatts around uh, this particular uh, sampling distribution of the mean. So, the standard deviation is 0.286 gigawatts. The company is getting only 2 gigawatts. And so, when we do the calculations for the probability of this occurrence, namely the occurrence of 2 gigawatts or lower when the uh, sample is taken from a sampling distribution of the means centered at 2.3 gigawatts and standard deviation of 0.286 gigawatts. The probability comes to 0.147 which is rather high. So, you really cannot uh, question the uh, supplier because uh, 0.15 is a good uh, reasonable chance of occurrence of this kind of event. So, if you do the plotting with the mini tab, this is a normal distribution centered at 2.3 gigawatts and having a standard deviation of 0.7 divided by root 6 which is 0.286 gigawatts. So, this is the spread and I am looking at the probability of occurrence of 2 gigawatts or lower from this probability distribution and I am finding the probability the area under the uh, curve in the shaded region which comes to 0 0.147. So, moving on to the next example, the uh, plant contests the claim 
of the manufacturer that has claimed the population standard deviation of 0.7 gigawatts is rather uh, large. Hence, by uh, mutual agreement, the standard deviation is not used, but more measurements, namely 41, are carried out. Okay, so that 0.7 gigawatts is uh, thrown out of the uh, window. And uh, you are no longer even thinking of the uh, population being normally distributed. That is not mentioned in the problem statement. Whereas in the previous problem statement, it was given that the population was normally distributed. But you are also taking a large sample size of 41. The sample mean now comes to a slightly higher 2.1 gigawatts. But the sample standard deviation is 0.85 gigawatts. The sample standard deviation is even higher than the design specification value of 0.7 gigawatts. What would be the probability that the observed mean output or lower is possible? Uh, what is the probability of this occurrence that uh, you can get uh, a sample uh, mean of 2.1? Uh, 1 gigawatts or lower, that is what we have to find now. So, uh, conditions have slightly changed, population mean value mu is 2.3 gigawatts, sample mean x bar is 2.1 gigawatts, sample standard deviation s is 0.85 gigawatts, sample size is 41. We are no longer using the population standard deviation of 0.7 gigawatts. So, we are not supposed to use sigma, but we can use Yes, the sample standard deviation. When S is used, uh, that is permitted because the sample size is uh, quite large. We can even continue with the uh, normal distribution according to the central limit theorem. The central limit theorem says that irrespective of the uh, population uh, probability distribution characteristics, if a large sample is taken, typically uh, greater than 30, then the resulting sampling distribution of the means is also normal. In uh, the present case, the parent population, we do not have to worry about because the sample size is quite large and so the central limit theorem will apply and so the sampling distribution of the means is going to be normal. And since uh, we are going to use Yes, because sigma is not available for use, uh, the uh, yes value may be substituted for sigma in the calculations and we are also having a large sample size of 41 to account for it. So, uh, the problem calculations are quite straightforward. Instead of using sigma, here we use uh, yes, we have x bar minus mu by s by root n and that is uh, 2.1 minus 2.3 that is minus uh, 0.2 into root 41 divided by 0.85 that comes to minus 1.5066 minus 1.51. So, the probability of x bar less than 2 is equivalent to a probability of z less than minus 1.5 1 and that probability is now considerably reduced to 0.0 Six, six. So, the results show that the probability of the sample having power output less than or equal to 2.1 gigawatts may occur only 6.6 .6 percentage of the time or the probability value is 0 0.066. So, we stop here and uh, let the two parties take it from here. Okay. So, showing this on the uh, normal probability distribution, here we have a standard deviation of 0.13275. How did that come about? That was sig, uh, yes used as 0.85 divided by root 41. So, 0.85 by root 41 is 0.13275. The mean value hypothesized or uh, taken as 2.3 uh, gigawatts. So, that is what we have here. So, the probability of occurrence of 2.1 gigawatts or lower is given by the uh, area of the shaded portion and that is 0 0.066. Okay, so, the probability is 0 0.066. So, the two probability distributions are plotted uh, 
as shown in this figure generated from mini tab. So, you are having two probability distributions. The first one is centered at 2.3 gigawatts and uh, has a standard deviation of 0.2858. How did this 0.2858 come about? It was 0.7 gigawatts divided by root 6. The uh, design specification of uh, sigma was 0.7 gigawatts and the sample size was 6 in the first case. So, we are having uh, 0.7 divided by root 6 which is 0.2858. The second uh, distribution shown is having a lesser spread and uh, it is also centered at 2.3 gigawatts. It is based on a sample standard deviation of 0.85 gigawatts which is higher than 0.7 gigawatts and uh, still the spread is smaller because of the larger sample size. So, instead of using sigma by root n, we are using s by root uh, n2 where uh, S is 0.85 gigawatts and N2 is 41. So, 0.85 divided by root 41 is 0.1327 which is uh, more than half of uh, the earlier uh, spread value of 0.2858. So, you can see a lesser spread here and also the probability value declined. The next problem is uh, you are given a random sample from a parent population described by the complicated uh, probability distribution function where f of x is beta into gamma x e power x cube minus 1 by sin x. So, beta is an adjustable constant such that the probability distribution is a valid one. You know what it means the area under the curve for any probability distribution function should be 1 continuous uh, probability density functions uh, described by a smooth curve and the area under such curves should be equal to 1. So, we adjust the parameter beta such that this is a valid probability distribution function. Let the mean and standard deviation of the distribution be phi and psi that means uh, the variance of this distribution is psi squared. If the sample size was chosen as 64 find the mean and standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means. What is the form of the sample mean distribution and uh, what is the probability that the sample mean will be within 0.15 standard deviations of the population mean. So, since the sample size is quite large at 64 which is greater than 30, the sampling distribution of the means will be normally distributed according to the central limit theorem regardless of the shape of the parent population distribution. So, now the uh, problem is quite straightforward. The mean of this distribution of the sample means will be phi and the standard deviation will be psi by root 64 which is 0 0.125 psi. So, 1 by root 64 is 1 by 8 which is 0 0.125. So, the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the means would be 0 0.125 psi. This distribution may be represented by a normal distribution of mean phi and uh, variance which will be square of this 0 0.01563 psi squared. Okay, 0 0.125 squared, let us uh, confirm 0 0.125 squared is 0.015625. So, that is fine. What is the probability that the sample mean will be within 0.15 standard deviations from the population mean? So, uh, the problem can be uh, expressed in the following way probability of the value of the random sample being 0.15 sigma distant from the population mean. So, probability of mu which is the uh, population mean and also the random sample probability distribution mean mu minus 0 0.15 sigma less than or equal to x bar less than or equal to mu plus 0 0.15 sigma. So, the random sample uh, which we take may have a value either uh, lower than mu or uh, higher than mu 
and uh, it may lie either on the right hand side of mu or on the left hand side of mu. So, now it is easy to normalize and uh, how do we normalize? We just uh, subtract mu from x bar and divide by sigma by root n. We do it in all the other two sides of the uh, inequality and then we get minus 0.15 sigma by sigma by root n plus 0.15 sigma by sigma by root n and this works out to probability of minus 1.2 less than or equal to z which is a standard normal random variable less than or equal to 1.2 and uh, this comes to 0.77 okay that can be uh, read off from the uh, standard uh, normal probability charts i hope now you are comfortable using these charts and uh, you should be able to figure out how we get this 0 0.77 i'll just illustrate this on the board So, you have the standard uh, normal distribution which is having a mean value of 0 and variance sigma squared is equal to 1 and we have to find uh, the area under the curve 1.2 minus 1.2, 1.2 minus 1.2. So, what we can do is probability of z less than 1.2 minus probability of z less than minus 1.2. So, first what we do is we find the area under the entire curve and uh, then from this total area we subtract out this area and we get the required uh, probability. If I remember right, uh, this comes to around uh, 0.88 and uh, then this would be 0 0.12. If the entire area is uh, around 0 0.88, then this area would be 0 0.12 and by symmetry, this area would also be equal to this area would be 0 0.12. So, 0 0.88 minus 0 0.12 is 0 0.76. I am just doing it from memory and you can also see the answer is coming to 0 0.77. Let us move on to the next problem. Here we have the Pareto distribution, uh, quite an interesting function. Uh, this was the problem I had uh, taken from the Ramchandran and Sokos book and f of x is equal to a by x power a plus 1, x greater than or equal to 1 is equal to 0 for x less than 1. So, the parameter a is referred to as the shape factor. What is the maximum likelihood estimator of the parameter a based on the random sample x1, x2, so on to xn. Some of you may ask, we do not know the value of a and we do not know whether this is a valid uh, probability density function. So, finding the area under the curve from 1 to infinity a by x power a plus 1 dx should tell us the value of a. So, what is the additional need for uh, finding the value of uh, a? I leave it to you. Okay. Uh, the hint is you cannot find out uh, a using this method for the simple reason that no matter what value of a you plug in there, the integral uh, 1 to infinity will be equal to 1. When you do the integration, you can find out this will be x power minus a minus 1. So, it will be minus uh, 1 by x power uh, a and uh, the a would cancel out and uh, so when you go from uh, 1 to infinity, it would be 1 minus 0. 1 power a is always going to be 1. I request you to do the uh, integrations yourself and confirm that no matter what the value of a is, the a will cancel out and so this area under the curve will always be equal to 1. So, let us move on to the actual problem. We have to define the uh, maximum likelihood function 
we are using the method of maximum likelihood uh, parameter estimation method to find out what A is. The Pareto probability density function is expressed only in terms of a single parameter theta. It is represented as f of x comma theta. Let us take a random sample and once their values are known, we will denote them by x1, x2, so on to xn. So the likelihood function of the sample for the single parameter case is uh, L of theta is equal to f of x1 theta into f of x2 theta, so on to f of xn theta. So we have to uh, estimate this parameter by uh, maximizing this uh, relationship. So first get us, let us get the uh, relationship L of theta is equal to f of x1 theta into f of x2 theta so on to f of xn theta and uh, that would be a by x1 to the power of a plus 1 into a by x2 to the power of a plus 1 so on to a by xn to the power of a plus 1. So L of theta is equal to a power n because I am doing it n times and this is a product of all the x values to the power of a plus 1. And uh, when we take natural logarithm on both sides, we get ln of L is equal to ln of f, f of x1 theta into f of x2 theta so on to f of xn theta. So ln L is equal to ln of a power n by the product of the entities xi to the power of a plus 1 i running from 1 to n. So when we take uh, ln L, we have this, we can split it into two parts ln of a power n becomes n ln a and then this becomes ln of product of x i to the power of a plus 1. So again this is quite simple, you will get ln of l is equal to n ln a, we saw this earlier. How did this get simplified? You know that uh, the uh, log of product of entities is the uh, sum of ln of those entities. So the a plus 1 is common here and you can put a plus 1 here and then you get sigma i equals 1 to n ln of xi. The next step is to differentiate this function with respect to a and then equate it to 0 and uh, when you differentiate with respect to a, this becomes n by a and uh, here we had a plus 1, there was no a inside. So that became quite simple, minus 1 into sigma ln xi. So the estimated parameter a is given by n divided by sigma i equals 1 to n ln of xi. So quite simple. Let us move on to the next problem. Use the method of moments to find the parameter estimators of the following probability distribution function f of x is equal to 1 by b minus a is equal to 0 otherwise. So we have to estimate both a and b. We are going to use the method of uh, moments. So f of x is equal to 1 by b minus a and the first moment e of x is obtained uh, from the distribution in the following manner. Expected value of x is equal to a to b x dx by b minus a which is uh, x squared by 2. So b squared minus a squared by 2, uh, b plus a into b minus a by b minus a. So b minus a will cancel out. So we have b plus a by 2. An expected value of x squared, the second moment is given by x squared dx by b minus a, x cube by 3. x cube by 3 uh, will become b cube minus a cube and uh, so you are having uh, b cube minus a cube divided by b minus a which is b minus a by b minus a into b squared plus b a plus a squared and that is what we have here. So these distribution moments may be equated with the first and second sample moments and when we do that we get m1 as uh, 1 by n sigma i equals 1 to n x1 plus x2 plus so on to xn. Uh, we will just correct that typo control okay here we go. So m1 is equal to 1 by n sigma i equals 1 to n x1 plus x2 plus so on to xn is equal to a plus b by 2 
m2 is equal to 1 by n sigma equals 1 to n x1 square plus x2 square plus so on to xn squared that is a squared plus ab plus b squared by 3 which is same as what we had and uh, so we have two equations in two unknowns the unknowns are a and b the moments are uh, m1 and m2 those are not unknowns okay so we can write m1 is equal to a plus b by 2 and m2 is equal to uh, a plus b whole squared minus a b where uh, this can be written as a squared plus 2 a b plus b squared minus a b that would be a squared plus a b plus b squared and when you have these and you solve for uh, a and b you get these two relations. I leave the uh, quadratic equation solving to you. Uh, hope you get the same answers as I did. So thanks for your attention and uh, we were uh, doing some illustrative problems. There are lots of books on statistics and probability which have uh, many interesting problems. I request you to not only solve these problems independently but also look up the problems in various books and try to solve them without uh, any assistance either from these lectures or uh, from the worked out examples in those books. Try to solve them on your own. And if you are getting the correct answer well and good, nothing more has to be said. But if you are finding uh, some difficulties and you are not able to uh, get the correct answer, go through the uh, lecture material again, see where exactly uh, you have not understood, correct uh, your concepts and then hopefully you will be able to work out these kind of problems in a correct manner. The important thing is not the actual numerical solving, uh, but the interpretation the assumptions made and uh, the concepts being uh, applied in these kinds of problems. So thanks for your attention, we will see you in the next class.